Assalamu what do we got for tonight? Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam Sayyidi when the birth of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu nears why do we feel an immense attraction and love for our King Sayyidina Muhammad than other months? <coughs> You know, <clears throat> this life, the way we played it was like a video game that I think when my kids were growing up it was Zelda and there were like coins and you would run around and catch all these coins and I was really good at playing that because the concept made sense to me, grab the coins as many as you possibly can before you go to the next level. And you realize that next level required those coins. What are Allah teaching us in life? Don't let good opportunities pass because your nafs thinks you're important. Without me it won't happen, if I don't support nothing will happen. No, Allah will replace you with someone better. These are Allah's gifts whom have hearts that are good and clean and not been corrupted by shaitan in which shaitan whispers within their heart, why? To destroy them, without me nothing will happen. No, that's not true at all. They will kick you off the train and it keeps moving a thousand miles per hour. But this is an opportunity like a video game. Allah says, why you're not collecting all this gold in the room? Is it that you don't see it as any value? Or you think there should be an immediate exchange because people of faith they understand these are beyond gold. These are treasures in paradise that have an eternal value that in every opportunity they're quick to snatch them up. Milad comes they're quick to plan it. Now we're planning, copy your shaykh. We're planning in Vancouver, we're planning in India, we're planning in Pakistan, we plan in Kenya, we plan wherever Allah opens to have a grand Mawlid celebration for the poorest of people, not the rich people. Vancouver there's no poor people like that. But in every opportunity Allah grab it. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. If there's wells to be made, we make them. If there's food to be distributed, distribute it. If there's things to support, you support it. If there's nights to celebrate, you celebrate it. Everything that Allah opens, it's not that you use your cleverness, ah, I don't need it. But they are Rabbi Alhamdulillah that you inspired me towards this goodness. Grant me a himma in which to grab the most I can. And by taking the most we could, it filled the accounts with immense blessings, immense blessings. Blessings that shower over now to my community, to our family, to everyone. Because this is how we played this game in life. Because you can only learn from what your shaykh, not from a book. And we learn from our shaykh the same system. This Allah's ni'mat, Allah is showing you this tray but has faith. Do you see these diamonds? Do you want any of them? Then take them. If the faith is strong and the eyes are clean, they see it as an immense blessing and they quickly grab it. And as a result 
every barakah and blessing flows within their life. But the ones whom eyes became dirty, they said, no, no, I, I pass, oh no, I pass. And then you hear that they're in difficulty. Did you ever put two and two together? Why are you in difficulty? Why would your sustenance be in difficulty? Means these are the blessings in our life that open and continue the flow. If you're stingy this flow stops, if you're miserly this flow stops. If your brain is always trying to analyze, it's like trying to walk on water, you'll never take the first step. So the shaykhs their life was they're walking on water, people come and ask, how is this happening? So I don't know how it's happening. You should have asked that 30 years ago but now we're walking. When Allah wants something to happen it happens. We don't do it their way, we do it our way that we've been taught. You do it and Allah supports it. And in our lives quickly grabbed everything of a barakah and blessing, tried to do all of the nights that were required, all of the practices that were required depending upon our health and our age. And as a result you're filled with immense barakah and blessings in which you need for yourself, your community, your children and their descendants because they may not have someone like you when you leave this earth. So everything has to be planned ahead. Now they have life insurance packages, all sorts of different programs for people to plan ahead which is alhamdulillah. But Allah has the best package, so why do you need to plan ahead? Why did you think that your, your, your things were full, it was enough? Who will take care of your children and grandchildren and their faith and their actions and their blessings and barakah? And how will anything reach to your community? Have anyone thought that why we make books? Was it for my entertainment or the thousand dollars we got from the book? It definitely wasn't for money, we don't have audiences that reach like a Saudi person, you know, 500,000 people, we're talking about 10 people. But they leave it as a legacy for students who will come after they're long gone from this earth. Look at my shaykhs have all but vanished now. Mawlana shaykh you don't have a, anything but a book left, we used to have cassettes. And the other Mawlana shaykh his health is not well. But you have 72 books to read and every time you read them you remember his sobats and his talks and his knowledges are like fountains that never end in reality. And this is the legacy that the shaykh leaves behind for his family and his students. So means the people of foresight and not heedless, they plan for generations and they plan for all of eternity. The Ya Rabbi whatever I'm planning for this dunya I want to sit eternally with the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad amongst all the Nabi'een because I love them all and I want to be with all the shuhada and salihin and siddiqeen. So then why you're not planning for it? And that's how our life was. That we didn't think it's just short term and oh I did live this, I did like that and now I'm clever. But how am I going to eternally establish what needs to be established for generations to come? For if I should achieve a station at their table, from that table I can always reach out to my descendants upon this earth. Imagine sitting at the table with Prophet and look to your grandchildren on earth and they're a complete disaster, their lives are in difficulty. What do you have in your account to resolve that? Most people, 99% of the people have nothing. They don't have anything even in their account to help themselves. But those whom achieved with these barakah and these blessings and ni'mat that Allah gave, imagine you're sitting with Prophet saying, please Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem reach to my loved ones, reach to my descendants, intercede for them. And it's but one du'a and Allah dispatch, Prophet dispatch awliya to take care of them. This is a great accomplishment but if people can't think and see beyond their nose because shaitan played with them then there's nothing that can be said more than that. We pray that Allah grant us this himmah and zeal 
and we should think of eternity not only just dunya inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah <coughs> Sayyidi, what are the practical steps we can follow to make our little children to love and acknowledge our King Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam, to make them to understand, to be of service to him Wasallam. Forgive my ignorance. Yeah, everything we just described. <coughs> you can't give what you don't have. So means you do the zikr, you do the salawats, you go out and give food for the sake of Prophet to, to people and let your children see how much love you have. And you do the best that you can but build your connection with Prophet That was the whole talk, you build this nazar and closeness in which you achieved, you reached the goal. You have the hand of Sultan and Nasir. we've described many times that you reach the authorized king. Can you imagine that you reach to the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad The shaykhs can because they have a written document that says Prophet has signed for you. So it means that Sultan and nasira is that they reached Allah's authorized Sultan at that time Whatever you're asking is reaching to your family, to your community and to your loved ones. So we spend time on the children but don't get distracted thinking you're going to play with the kids. You know they told you on the plane that if this plane starts to dive, don't play with the mask on your kid, put the mask on yourself otherwise you're going to pass out while you're playing around with the mask, means you'd be so distracted playing, you know, guiding your kids thinking it's about your kids and yet you don't do anything yourself to reach Prophet <laughs> And then what benefit is that? That works for a year or two and then it's thrown away because that faith become like a, a, a flower on a rock, it blows away. But when you're firm and your handhold is tight with Prophet <laughs> anything you ask it will be granted slowly time with time in Allah's in Allah's time, not our time. But that love and that connection is so strong that with all your heart you know they're going to resolve your life situation because your focus is on them and their focus is on you. But when you focus on you then you lost the focus of them. Bismillah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, if our actions are an imitation and we struggle with the basics of sincerity and love, do we focus on more practices or do we meditate to expand our heart's love? Huh? Once again please. <laughs> if our actions are an imitation and, yes. and we struggle with the basics of sincerity and love, do yes. we focus on more practices or do we meditate to expand our heart's love? Well what have we been talking about in the last probably month or so is, uh, is the character. Means that the character is supreme. If you go around bothering people Prophet becomes angered by you. Right? So, all the worshipness in the world, so this common sense, somebody recites so much and then you look they pray so much and perfect like Hafiz. Perfect, perfect praying, reciting, sit there, Allah, 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 look like they're doing all of these things. Uh, and then all of a sudden they begin to bother people, left and right, left and right. And the rule is that if you break a heart of somebody then now you have a hisab with Allah that you've angered Allah because this is the house of Allah 
قال بالمؤمن بيت الله if they're mu'min then even much more dangerous in your life to do that. That no good will come to you, to your family, to nothing, nothing. Doesn't matter you sit in associations of zikr that nothing matters because now you're even more accountable. It's like going to the Kaaba and pickpocketing people. So I'm at the Kaaba I'll be safe if I bother people. No, it actually counts as a million times more of a sin. So the shaykhs are actually like a Kaaba. When you do sinful acts in their association it's counted by a million. It's not the shaykh will take it away, it's actually multiplied your sins because they're like haramain. They are walking Kaaba and Qibla. So their associations, that's why they teach manners. What value did all of the ibadah if the akhlaq was not right, the character was not right? Means actually it wipes out the ibadah because what's the value in it? It's not gaining anything, it's not, it's not giving us a proximity to Allah So the tariqah comes and teaches they're focused on your manners because this is where the character flaw is that don't tell people things, don't comment about everything, don't be negative about everything, don't, don't critique and, and do things to harm people, to make people to be upset. Only worry about yourself. That should be enough of a battle is to fix yourself, work on yourself. Only thing wrong is just myself, everything else everyone's just great, they have their own grave, Allah will deal with them. So that's the whole of tariqahs, come and work on yourself. In last days it becomes like a jahaliya in which the tariqah is trying to focus on ibadah and not on character. So there is even these uh, so-called shaykhs, they go around and backbite shaykhs. So what happened to akhlaq and character? And they want to talk about ibadah and worshipness but for what? You rendered the worshipness void by the bad character. Now go the reverse way to see how important because this, the science has to be correct. So you pray, you do everything but you're belligerent, you're angry, you smack somebody, yell at somebody, immediately you voided all those good deeds. That's common sense because Allah is like, you broke the heart of people, what are all this, I don't need any of those things. You're not going to be qualified to represent me, if you can't do khitbat for me then what I need you for? You better to go to the grave. Now go the reverse way in which the character is so amazing, very humble, very beautiful people. There are some people in, in our group you bother them they never say anything. They're like a flower, peaceful, peaceful people. Allah tests them through their homes and through their, their entire environment and they always remain calm and peaceful. But their worshipness may have faults. What do you think Allah does with that? He brings an angel into existence and tells the angel, you make up his worshipness. Well we're shy to punish that one has good character. You think this is hard for Allah And that's why the hadith of Prophet you come across a people whom their character is good and their amal have weaknesses but their character outranks their amal. That Allah by means of their good character forgives the shortcomings in their actions. They may not pray the best, they may not fast the most, they may not do all of those things. But what Allah is looking for is the superior character because the character is gold. The actions, who needs them? The character is gold. For if you find somebody with good character like gold, anything you put in them it's going to be good. You send them out to deal with people it's going to be a good result. You get them involved in things it's going to be a good result. So same for Allah is going to give. If their character is good I'll give them everything. I will even inspire them to increase their ibadah and their worshipness. 
So this is why it's superior, otherwise people focusing on, on worshipness and, and reading, reciting, all of these things and in the end they act like a thug, like a robber, like a crook. Allah is not interested in these types of people, they're wasting their time, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi <coughs> Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, what is the sabr for regular people and what is the sabr for tariqah people? Sabr jameen for all people, what does it matter regular and, and tariqah people? Allah wants the beautific sabr. <coughs> we described in other talks that Allah wants to give the secret of sabr and dress because every name of Allah has a key from Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mustafa is the key to sabr. If Allah want to grant you sabr then the chosen one, the beautific and fragrant one has to put the key into that ismullah to dress the servant. And the secret for being dressed with sabr jameel in which their character is very patiently and very beautifically patient. Doesn't mean you can abuse them because Allah will punish you but that they're patient in what Allah has, has bestowed upon them, written for them. And the secret to sabr was don't expect anything in life, is cut all expectations because this is from shaitan. As soon as you expect something you become angered, apprehensive, aggressive and this from shaitan. So when you take out expectations and this is very difficult, if you're expecting a station and maqam don't. If that's why you're doing things don't expect anything. If you say, I'm going to give this and I'm going to expect this, expect nothing. I'm expecting on this holy night, this opening, expect nothing. I'm expecting from this family, this people, this thing, expect nothing. From your children, expect nothing. From your spouse, expect nothing. And as a result, because your love is only Allah and Muhammadun Rasulullah you find your love within them. When you take expectation away what happens? You become happy with everything because I wasn't expecting that. When the kids are kind you say, oh, alhamdulillah I wasn't expecting them to be kind now alhamdulillah Allah sent that, this is great. If you expect, no they have to do like this, that everything has to be like this, work has to be like this, you'll never reach sabr. Because your expectation and false expectations within the mind shaitan will play with. Oh you were waiting for a shura and a big opening, look it didn't come to you, might as well leave the tariqah now. So this is how shaitan is playing all the time with people. So in our lives we were taught don't expect anything. If you truly don't expect anything then everything that comes to us becomes a big surprise, MashaAllah look at that, wow, I wasn't expecting that guy to support the Mawlid and then all of a sudden Allah sends. You say, Alhamdulillah, I wasn't expecting this, Alhamdulillah and your life goes very peacefully and then you become shukr and thankful to Allah for every day what He sends, today was a good day, Alhamdulillah. So take away expectation inshaAllah. And Nabi Muhammad and Mustafa to open the key of sabr and Ayatul Jabbar and Ayatul Sabr is in this Ahlul Bayt in, in which the, they take on the fate and they enter into oceans of difficulty. And the holy companions, no different, we're celebrating the shuhada, the <coughs> the Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi Sayyidina Muhammad. Shahadat of Sayyidina Umar Farooq means all these companions went through extreme difficulty for the love of Prophet and to achieve Allah's dress upon their souls. And so they're all dressed with Nabi Muhammad and Mustafa So they're exemplars in our life that just be patient, be patient, expect nothing 
and be happy with whatever results Allah gives to us. For those results are the best of results. That goes back to kill the chicken somewhere where you don't think Allah can see. Everyone says, oh I know that, there's nowhere where Allah can't see. But yeah then why are you acting like you can't see? Whatever results came is that same example. Allah's looking at you and say, you don't like this result? Why? So the one who has faith they know, Astaghfirullah Ya Rabbi Alhamdulillah, you know best and it's always by love. What you gave to me or what you kept away from me I know it's by your love. Had it come it may have been bad for me. So it means that Allah does everything for loving servants by love. But if you're not loving servant then you have to be worried. That's why we teach everybody go have good adab so that you're always thinking Allah's loving. If you have good adab you never think that Allah's punishing you because you haven't done anything wrong. But when you go around bothering people you know Allah's punishment is coming. Right? It's like a stick, you're waiting for when this stick going to hit me? It's coming, don't worry. But when you have good manners you don't think like that because you say, no I'm trying the best to best to help people and I, and I stay quiet through situations and I'm trying my best to be good. Everything that Allah sends is beautiful, alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah, inshaAllah. Sayyidi this question from one of the kids from the group. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Does the pen also build energy if we keep using it to take notes for your soba just like tasbih? Yes definitely very nice question alhamdulillah. We said before that the <coughs> pen is mightier than the sword and we have a song, we have a recitation that you are from the ni'mat of love and <coughs> that your words changed my destiny. And we've given examples many times before. Imagine you're just somebody who goes to work, goes to donut shop and goes home. Every day, every day that's your life. It's written for you what you did at work, you had your donut, you went home and that's all your kitab will have. But one time Allah makes you stop. Go into that zawiyah, sit in that zawiyah and as soon as that person sat in the zawiyah this Muhammadan talks begin. And for some reason the person says, this is very interesting, takes out a pen and starts to write two, three lines of what was said, an example, uh, uh, an uh, analogy that the person liked. As soon as they wrote that this now entered on by their angels onto their book of destiny. That haqqaiq and that reality is now written onto their kitab, immediately it changes the destiny of that person. Because that dress of Muhammadun Rasulullah and all those haqqaiqs they change the kitab. Because now the kitab is not just my book of what I did right and wrong and what I did all day long and what I ate. The kitab becomes the registry of knowledges. You can't imagine that. It's like a gold pen now has to be brought down. Different angels have to come to document these haqqaiqs because of the rank and the weight in which these realities occur. As a result now these haqqaiqs they become like loaded realities upon the book of the servant. That book now becomes very noble in Divinely Presence. It changes now even the sustenance for the soul of that servant. So yeah with just the word from the shaykh they can change the destiny of people who document it. Because it's going to change their book, it's going to change what the angels wrote is going to forever change the course and the destiny of that individual. Because there are angels who ask on the day of death that, have you seen this Muhammadiyoon? And they're going to answer from the truth of their soul, not from their nafs. Means have you seen any of this Muhammadan Rasulullah realities? Have you seen what Mawlana Shaykh would call Muhammadiyoon? The angels will ask, 
in your lifetime have you seen a Muhammadiyoon? The ego didn't know, the soul will say, yes I did. I went to such and such association I saw that shaykh. And Mawlana shaykh would say, put my face everywhere. But these are now for all awliya, that's why they have permission to put their face. They put the face everywhere because the face will grab people and will make their souls to testify on Yawmul Mashar. If their ego was too big to accept it, the soul will say, no I have seen a Muhammadiyoon and the face intercedes for them to bring them to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Like we said in the earlier talk that all their life the shaykhs they are trying to get the nazar of Prophet Why? Because that nazar is the hadith. When Allah says, I see through his eyes, I hear through his ears. When the face of Prophet looks at you, it's a gaze from Allah and that annihilates their soul, drunkens their soul. It's, it's the greatest energy and blessing they can possibly achieve and their whole life is yearning after that reality to do good deeds to receive more of that anayat and, and, and satisfaction from Allah when He directs the holy face of Prophet to look upon you. So then what do you think then when the shaykh's face is directed towards people? It becomes the nazar of Prophet upon them that they see with the, with the eyes of Prophet they hear with the ears of Prophet because they're inheriting that reality. So everything is a tool for Muhammadun Rasulullah So upon this earth he has 124,000 Muhammadiyoon. And if you meet one of them and if they look at you, they look at you with the face of Prophet with the attributes of Prophet because there's the hadith, I become the eyes in which you see that's Prophet talking to them because Prophet is taking from Allah Atiullah, Atiya Rasul and the Ulul Am are taking from Atiya Rasul so means then when we put the face of the shaykh out then the face of Prophet is grabbing people and they will testify with their soul that yes they saw the Muhammadan light and bring them to the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad <coughs> So just their words can change the destiny of people and change their kitab, their sustenance and the eternal reality of their soul. Their association through lights and energies no matter where you are, the light of their association can change your molecular structure. So the, the, the unimaginable what Allah gives to the reality of Prophet InshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can making food and taking it to colleagues at work the same as feeding someone outside on Ashura? I don't think feeding colleagues at work is the same as, as, as Ashura but yeah feeding anybody but the feeding people <laughs> at work. Alhamdulillah is a good deed to feed people but to, to feed those in need I think is what we're trying to accomplish. So that uh, work environment is to be careful not to be too social at work. So the work environment we, we have other talks that are dangerous now, they call this the family, work family which is, is, is not, not correct. There's no family except your family and the one that you are legally married to, that's it. The work is work, you should take your check and go home, if you play too much in the Kitchen and cafeteria leads to problems. So food in the cafeteria, cakes in the cafeteria, birthday celebrations, all of this kind of stuff is, is a distraction to our lives. As far as distributing food, it's best to give to those in need inshaAllah so that they can take the food and, and nourish their, their souls. And they don't have to be Muslim, 
to be anyone who's homeless or in difficulty is Allah's creation. He created this creation with love and maybe through the intercession of that food they come towards healing, they come through any addiction, Allah knows best that that ni'mat reach to these people and save them from this sort of despicable condition of being upon the streets and how shaitan has put hardship upon them inshaAllah. Give water, give uh, food, give all these different things that we can do and give to the associations that are doing that already. Not everybody can go to India and give food and find orphanages so we're already doing that so support these projects because they need support, the people are willing and able and they go out in droves to accomplish this inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Shaykh, why does achieving the world of malakut seem harder than achieving the world of form? How do we gain the energy to achieve our light reality when shaitan is attacking continuously? Why would the world of light be easier? Means the, the world of form that's all around you <coughs> and trying to come into submission but the world of light is hidden within you and it's being locked out of you by the world of form. Because the body is absorbed with all of these desires and all of these negative energies, how can it crack out and reach towards its reality? So the more that people oppress their form, the difficult, more difficult the soul is to come out. So it's a given like a, like a, a treasure inside of an egg, how the treasure is going to come out if it doesn't break the egg? But shaitan makes your egg to be put in concrete, he dips it in concrete and every time you have a bad desire another piece of concrete until your egg is so much like a rock now it can no longer crack for the reality of your soul to come out. So all awliya would describe that this world and this body of ours is a prison and the soul is its prisoner. So what actions can you do to open the prison? Is the salawat, the muraqabah, the meditation, the good deeds and charity that clean us from our bad actions and bad character. As a result of these zikrs and these practices you can loosen the bar to make a connection. And you make a connection with the shaykh, bring the light into your heart, keep making your salawat until this energy can become stronger and begin to move the bars even further apart so that the soul can move out and begin to cook inside so that the hard rock can melt on the outside. And it's going to require the meditation and the muraqabah so that to pierce the negativity. But can somebody just sit there practice and think they're going to rise to the heavenly kingdom and pass the state of death on their own? That would be ridiculous, like pull yourself out of quicksand, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah If we are doing some feeding for the homeless, is it recommended that we tell you about it? No. If you're doing <coughs> bigger projects that you want the, them to put out, then you can send the email to help me at nurmuhammad.com and they can publish the bigger projects but everything you do doesn't have to come to us, we're not uh, somebody you have to confess your life to so <laughs> it doesn't work that way, the reward comes from Allah But if you want to help us to promote and, and the, it's a bigger project then alhamdulillah people on the internet this ridiculous comments I think from non-Muslims, they say, why are you posting giving food away and, and why are you posting these people needing water? And say, if you don't post it how would people know that there's such a desire and need? Because the people on the west they have money and the people in these regions they need water and food and, and all sorts of resources. 
if you don't let somebody know that they need these, how would anything be done? And it's because people they don't want to see suffering and difficulty, they want to be under the illusion everything is fantastic in the world and it's not. And why Allah gave certain people to have and certain people to have not because the hikmah is that this is your brother and sister. And what Allah gave to you it was a responsibility to take care and give back to the ability that people can. And this is the perfection of faith and faith in action and this is what the, we pray that Allah grant us all the himma to do good deeds, good characters, good thoughts. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.